Hey, now this one's different. It's not completely spitballing because we haven't gone over this in class. And it's interesting because it is an ethical issue, but I guess it's not that big of an ethical issue. The treatment of people. We have talking about, talked about sexuality and treating genders equally and the environment and thinking about other humans. We never got to address the racism issue as a whole. I'm white, you're not by issue, which I thought was interesting. And in the book um, by Michael Thomas, uh, titled Man Gone Down, it's a huge, 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 huge part of the entire story, the entire narrative. The dude's black and white and Native American. He's a good, healthy chunk of three, but his uh, he has darker skin than the majority of people, lighter skin than the majority of uh, black people. So he kind of is stuck in the middle of this place. Um, he The first time he really addresses it is whenever he, um, they're at the art studio and they're... He and this woman that she, he ended up just meeting up with again uh, as he's walking down the street, strolling, minding his own business, and he sees this girl on the phone. He's like, ooh, let me jump on that. Anyways, there's no respect for his marriage. I'm not saying I don't respect his marriage. I'm saying he doesn't respect his marriage. So then how can you assume that I'm going to respect your marriage if you don't do that for yourself? So as they're walking into the, it's her art studio, her art exhibit, and they're walking through, um, go, they go upstairs, and as they're on the way out, this is whenever he uh, makes it clear that race is important to him. I mean, it's going to be important to any person that's not, well, even the white people, but it's going to be more important to non-whites because it forms their perspective on culture, values, Pretty much anything, especially in America. Um, they're walking out, and he notices that um, both pe the people that are kind of surrounding the area and blocking, just like the crowd, the mob thing, as they're walking through. And normally, he says that people just like look at him and don't do anything and just like kind of ignore him or like purposefully get in his way but now that he's with a woman of the same color because this woman's black too um now there's a woman he's with a woman of the same color he said that people would see look at them both and then move out of the way like it's an approval like yeah you go ahead you go right ahead you you're getting your life together because you're with a woman of the same color he brings this up as an issue because he is married to a white woman He's married to Claire, and he doesn't, that kind of like throws in some more confusion about like, well then, who should be attracted to, blah, 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 is it meant for this to happen, blah, 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 blah. It brings up more, 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 more issues. So already that whole issue of race not only impacts his relationship, but also the view of himself. Like, is he worthy to be with this woman? Because obviously he can't provide for her. Obviously he can't do this. Obviously he can't do that. And is it because of my color? These people, these people in this group who are allowing you to pass finally, think it, that's the problem. Or could it be that I'm extremely depressed and unemployed and have no motivation to do anything? Blah, blah, blah. That, that could be part of a system that perpetuates racism and discrimination and inequity. Needless to say, his experience in high was it high school or college? School. His experience in school, he was friends with white people. And there was an instance, I remember describing this in one of the summaries, that um, there were going to be, there were going to be this huge fight over alcohol at this, I think frat boys, or like potential frat boys, or soon to be frat boys. They were frat boys. So they circled around his friend, around both of them, kind of had them trapped. And his friend, of course, this skinny white boy, is going to stand up for like, I'm not giving back anything I took. I'm not paying for anything. Of course, one of the other guys came over and just like, they started to start fighting. He was going down, but our narrator didn't do anything. He just looked at him. But then everyone was looking at the narrator like, 
He's gonna jump us. He's gonna jump us. Oh, oh. He, so never he moved, and there he moved. Everyone moved out of the, out of their way, and he wasn't even moving to like hit someone. He was just moving to go, like get out of the situation. So what's it about this black guy? What's he gonna do? That's so scary. I mean, if he was big and hefty and like bulk and like, yeah, he could probably crush you in an instant, like like a pretzel. I don't know why I use pretzel. Why would I? Use... But he was just a skinny black guy, and they automatically assumed that he would be able to beat them up. What stereotype are you feeding into? Interestingly enough, Michael Thomas is a black man who is writing about a black man's experience in a first-person narrative. And I think it's interesting that he kind of puts it in subtly. He doesn't really make that much of an issue. The homosexuality is more, more subtle than this, but it, it, it's kind of integrated to look, it would seem normal, like, what's the problem? Um, but for everything else, all the other topics I've been discussing, it's like, oh, this is obviously a problem. But for the racism is an issue. Michael Thomas isn't as explicit. He isn't as overt about how the narrator has to deal with it or if it even exists. And it does. And I think it was intentional for Michael Thomas, the author, to kind of integrate it subtly inside to make it seem that it's just, it's become a norm. It's become a norm for an African American or black person in America to experience racism in that kind of way and, it, and everyone will be okay with it. It's like, oh, he's just black, you know, just be scared of him, it's gonna be okay. You know, they're not, just act scared, they're not gonna hurt you. Like, it's just a class of how to evade stereotypes because that's not working. That's, that's perpetuating it. That's making it worse. And what's sad is that he probably even grew up with this going when he was in, uh, in grade school and like elementary. And like that's when he was probably taught that this is just how it is. There's no changing it. You can't go away from it. It's going to happen like this. Which I have a problem with. So I grew up, I was privileged enough to work, grow up in private middle school through college. So I've been in this private school field for a while. It's, it's, been, it's been interesting. The problem with that I have that being raised in only private school for this long is I've developed several different words for this. But I think acculturation is probably what encompasses the whole thing. Like it forced out of my culture and, and into another one. For instance, I'm Hispanic. I was raised Hispanic until I got to about eighth grade. I was began to be, I was already three years into a private school. I was about to go to a college prep private school, um, Houston Christian in Houston. And that's when it started to happen. Now, now that I look back on it, there is this passive white normative culture that just dominates people and dominates minorities particularly. I would go to school and be influenced by all these wealthy, rich people who all were white except for one or two black or Asian people. And then there was me. There were some Hispanics, but like me, majority of the minorities were on full ride scholarships or financial based scholarships that really made it possible for us to get the same type of education. However, what they don't take into account is the struggle that we have when we go home. Majority of us, because we're still trying to get out of this whole system, um, is this whole discrimination system, this whole poverty system, these things that are cycles that keep you, keep us depressed, not depressed, oppressed. I'd go to school, see people, all this privilege, be influenced, like, oh, you should have this, you don't have this? And I'm like, oh, no, I don't. And go home to a family of, we were barely above the poverty line. We're, sometimes we'd actually flip back and forth between lower class 
um, and middle class. I think lower, like extreme lower class would be poverty. So I guess I would say that um, we'd be we'd border the lower uh, upper lower class and lower middle class section. And majority of my life, we've been in the upper lower class. Like we don't have money. We're living paycheck to paycheck. None of us have insurance on anything except our cars. No health insurance. Got to pay everything out of pocket. Been on food stamps. Lived in the car for four weeks. Actually, it was six weeks, but it was it was interesting. But like this is where I would go home to after living with people of privilege, and they would never understand that. They never see that because why would I bring that to school? That would so that would be so uncool to be the kid that can't afford a brand new phone or a really cool pen that changes colors as you write, or I'd be able to bring all my books to class because I can't afford to buy all the books. Anyways, it developed this dualism of my life perspective. And I didn't really realize that until college, whenever I started like being exposed to more different people, variety, diversity, um, I was not the only one. And I began to feel this immediate shame, this immediate guilt as I got to college about abandoning my culture, my heritage, my Hispanic heritage. And it's, it kind of is my fault, but it, I I keep on being told it's not my fault. This dominative white normative culture is just forced upon you and doesn't leave room for anything else. Um, so as our narrator is going through like all this, this questions and confusion and doubts, this is I'm so sure has, is what happened to him, what other people call being whitewashed. An example in my life is I can speak Spanish, and majority of people don't know that because I speak such good English. I went to a restaurant with a friend and their parents and grandparents. We went to a Mexican restaurant and I ordered in Spanish and everyone at the table freaked out. They were like, what? What? Huh? You speak Spanish? I was like, e obviously, like, but, but you speak such good English. Can I not speak both languages? Is that again? And I see the point. That kind of, I mean, to calm it down a little bit, I, I see that it could be, wow, I didn't expect you to be so bilingual or so well in both languages. But the initial shock was over someone who's educated and can speak good English cannot possibly be of a different culture or race and be raised in that without being somewhat of wealthy middle upper class which are majority white people so I was then asked are you adopted no no born and raised in Miami Florida by prideful Colombian family next question and it wouldn't be as difficult if they were just more sensitive, but it's the ignorance due to insensitivity that continue a disgust and hatred for racism and social inequity and inequality, both of them. Because they're, they're both important, inequity and inequality. Biblically, they're, well, first of all, biologically, there is no difference between a person genetically that is black and white and brown and caramel like doesn't there's no genetic difference thus skin color is not genetically valuable there is nothing no, no nothing in science that can support racism Nothing. It race are you black, white, brown, like 
Hispanic, whatever, Latino, that's all socially constructed. There's nothing else that could separate the people and try to put them in their own box so you can check it when you're taking the SAT or the ACT. However, I do think ethnicity is the more proper word to use because it depends on how you were raised culturally. Were you ra and that would not take away from color of skin and put on location of uh, geography and putting that stuff in there. Like American, Hispanic, Latino, um, Black American, African American, I would say instead. It, it, I'm still really iffy on getting the the exact difference between ethnicity and race, as I understand it. Race is um, socially constructed by skin color, and ethnicity is cultural upbringing background. Um, so that's when people I get I get bothered when people have Latino and Hispanic like slash like the same thing, and they're not. Like I, I, I was not raised with tamales. I was raised with empanadas. And anyways, not Mexican, Colombian. So then biblically, we might have been separated. And I think this is kind of where it comes from. Uh, people do think that in Exodus, that whenever uh, Noah's son saw him naked and it was so shameful that God left a, left a mark on his son, and they believe a lot of people, at least especially during the Civil War and the Confederacy and the churches would justify slavery by saying the mark of shame and guilt of sin that was left on Noah's son and then breed into the to other generations was his dark skin, was his black skin. There's no way to prove that and there's no way to justify that. It, there isn't. It show they're still humans. Just because they're marked doesn't mean that they can be less than human. Because they've sinned, everyone sinned. There's no way to justify. Oh, they're marked because of their shame and sin that happened 500 billion years ago. They must still be enslaved. No, that that's not. You can't do that. You can't say that. They're still human, and there's there's still sin as much. Not I don't know about as much. They still sin like you do, even if there was a. Um, justifiable slavery at some point in the world and the history of life there isn't any more the change what stopped is Jesus all are equal in him regardless of economic background um, ethnic background financial background whatever else other background is that people are considering or makes people less than other people we are made equal in Christ so it's stupid to hold grudges, stereotypes, other things that promote human inequality. To think that one person is more valuable than the other because of this. If a person is more valuable, as say worth more, then yeah, through the currency of money, they're more valuable through money, not through humanity, not through value of life. Every life is the same. Just because one has more money doesn't make them more important. It makes them more powerful. But there lies part of the um, systemic reason for racism. In the video, I'm not racist, am I? There is a part that um, they, really, they define racism. They'd say it's when um, bigots um, and meet with power creates racism. So bigots, meaning people who are extremely they have an extreme prejudice towards a pe people, towards a person, and develops into a people, and then to group people, and then very general, and that's how that's how it can be seen as. So when bigots attain power, then they can then force change to keep the people they don't like away, and that creates racism. So a race, it's really they may say something very controversial that all white people are racists, and I don't think that's true. I think the only racists that all racists are white people, not all white people are racists. Because not all white people are bigots. They have the power and they participate in that involuntarily, just like I do. I don't, well, I'm not involuntarily participating in the power, but I'm involuntarily participating in the racism. So that's why I think that um, all racists are white people.
but not all white people are racists. I have two really good friends who are not racist because they, they don't have any prejudice against anyone. And, and in fact, that's even, it's even better because they have this awareness of their privilege, of their power. They are not ignorant to the fact that as a white person, they are almost immediately inducted into the middle class and have um, and are trusted more and are not incarcerated as much, especially for the males, because black men are incarcerated the most, so much so that 75% of all jail inmates in the United States are black men. And while in prison, you don't get a vote. This is an example of how black men have lost a good portion of their vote because they've been arrested for some reason that might be justified legally, but probably is just jump through loopholes to get them there. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm just going with the facts that majority of inmates are black men. Thus, a lot, a huge population, huge portion of the black population lose votes and whenever elections come. That perpetuates the system of racism. It's a social construct. It's all in the politics. Just because Barack Obama became president does not mean that the blacks have the freedom to speak whenever they want to doesn't mean that the Hispanics have any freedom to eat wherever they want to. I'm, I am not welcome, and uh, or I notice I'm not welcome when I walk into a nice restaurant and I'm wearing some nice clothing, or if, even if I have to wear the nice clothing, which is something that I also think is socially constructed, because if you notice, all the wealthy, rich, white pe people are white, and they end up wearing the same expensive crap, blazers, khakis, and sperries. That does, because I was raised in America, that or and kind of brought up through private privileged people, alliteration. I, I understand that that might be classified as nice, but why? Why is, are those clothing, is that clothing the nice clothing? Why can't me wearing a bachanta be nice when I walk into a five-star restaurant? I really did enjoy reading Michael Thomas's book. It was just extremely long, and I regret that again. I apologize, Dr. Whitlock, for not taking your advice. However, I do think that um, this was a really fun project. It was really good to like get the set time aside to have to do things and like think about the ethics and how it applies to you. Um, to kind of conclude the section about uh, the narrator and racism, he still kind of just succumbed to the whole idea that you know he he has no way of winning, and for a long time that's just kind of been the way. But I kind of see it as people like me, who been able to slip through the gaps of this race racial. Um, system are supposed to, are held responsible to be able to correct the inequality and the inequity. It, not not that I have to, but I feel like I feel like that's part of my calling, my vocation. Uh, as we were, this entire project assignment thing is uh, supposed to be related to our vocation, and as a social worker, um, be able to work on as an activist would definitely be a route that I take, especially when it comes to um, social inequality. So really, really excited that this is over, but I'm really, really, really sad that I didn't get to be as creative with this last video. Just It just ended up not being. I wish I had time enough to plan out each every and every minute of my vlogs. But I ain't got time for that. And especially not knowing what to say, I didn't get any feedback on the other ones except that I need to turn them in on time. But thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, just leave a message on the video or I'll get notified by something. I don't uh, I really don't know who else is gonna be watching this video except for Dr. Whitlark and maybe the Reverend Ivo Novakovich. <sighs> that man. Such a great man. Great great PowerPoints. Hmm. Well, peace out, and that's the last of Barthian Fun Facts for now.